you believe that we are officially a quarter of the way into the year? Because I can't. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on my channel. It is time for another monthly reset. We're going to be resetting for the month of April. I am actually really excited for this reset. I feel like the past few months have been very, very slow and the winter was really getting to me and spring is finally coming. It's like sunny, the clocks have changed and I'm just in an overall better headspace, I think, for this video than I have been for some of my most recent ones. I'm not gonna waste any time here. We're going to hop right into the video and we're going to start with doing a quarterly check-in. I have a couple of reflection questions here that I'm going to tell you guys and we're going to go through together. So feel free to grab a notebook, grab your laptop, something to write on and review these with me. The first question is so basic, but simply write down what has happened in the past three months. It can be related to any of your goals, it can be related to life, it can be related to easy things, hard things, things you're proud of, things you're not, just what has happened. So I feel like things slowed down a lot when the year started. I was traveling so much at the end of last year, and this was the first time that I kind of took a break from traveling, basically since I moved out. And with that, you know, there comes a lot of um, mental difficulties, I think. While things in my personal life kind of slowed down, I did have a lot of things at work really pick up. I feel like I have been so busy. I'm really trying to figure out how to be productive during work hours. But with that, because I've been so busy at work, I found myself being really tired and low motivation after work. And it's hard for me to prioritize the things that I want to do when I'm spending all day using my brain, working really hard to then come home and do something else is really tough. I have kept up with my bullet journal and my habit tracking really consistently for the first time like ever, which is so nice and I've been able to keep up with so many habits by doing this. I got a new credit card, I got a new car, both of these were pretty big deals to me. My dad came to visit, he helped me buy the car, but then we went into the city, which was so much fun, and we went and saw a show. I absolutely love going out for dinner in the city, I've done it a couple of times, and every time I do it, it's just it's the best, and especially because I get to see people that I don't always get to see. I've also found that when I don't have plans, I really turn to retail therapy as a distraction, and I've spent a lot of money in that way. I've been feeling kind of low motivation on making YouTube videos, which is really sad because I really love making them. And the issue isn't that I'm feeling uninspired or uncreative. I have so many ideas. It's more like I can't put in the time and energy to execute those ideas the way that I want to. However, I did hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which is absolutely crazy. So thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate the support. The next reflection question is what do I do consistently on a weekly basis and what do I tend to neglect? So the point that I'm getting at here is what are those things that at the end of the week you realize, oh man, I didn't really do that or I wish I would have spent more time doing that. But also vice versa, what have you been putting your time to? This is just gonna help you to see what you're prioritizing. Anything that I have written down as a daily habit in my bullet journal, I have been so consistent at listening to my Bible in a Year podcast, um, doing my Duolingo, trying to learn Spanish, reading relatively regularly. I feel like I've gotten a lot better at for the past few months. All of those little n habits that are not super time consuming, I'm really, really good at just doing a bunch of those. However, like I said, I kind of have been struggling to find the motivation to work on content because it is a lot more time consuming and a lot more energy demanding than a lot of those little habits. The final reflection question is, where do I want to be on July 1st? So that'll be our next check-in point for the year that will be the, at the end of the next quarter will be July. So that's three months from now. So that's the same amount of time that you had from January until now. So where do you want to continue to go and be by July 1st? I want to be in a better swing of creating content that I'm really proud of, but also not holding myself to such high standards that I feel like I restrain myself from actually making the content. I would love to create a better portfolio for myself um, just across my various platforms so that I can potentially maybe start reaching out to brands, especially if I hit 4,000 watch hours, which would allow me to monetize my content on YouTube, which would be so cool. Um, and it's definitely an aim of mine 
just because I love doing this. Um, I don't need to get paid to do this, I'm gonna keep doing it anyway, but it is a really cool thing to have a little bit of extra income, you know? I also know that I'm going to have a lot of big changes coming in my life the second half of this year, and so I really just want to be in a place mentally that I feel good about those things coming. Um, I don't know how much I'm really going to be able to prepare for them, but I want to do my best to feel really secure in all the decisions that I'm going to be making. For a financial point of view, I want to have started investing. I really want to prioritize, I think, opening a Roth IRA. I've been going back and forth on this a lot, um, but I have been doing a lot of research and I really do think that this is something I want to do. And finally, I want to be more confident on point. I do do ballet. Um, just like adult classes, nothing serious, but I've recently started dancing a lot on point again and I just wanna get better and grow with that. So if you guys are around for my January reset, then you will, or my 2024 reset actually I should say, then you will know that I kind of categorize all of my goals into much larger kind of life priorities. So the first one is keep my health a priority. If I want to live a long life, I wanna be healthy, I really enjoy, exercise and working out. I love dancing and I want to be able to keep my body in as best condition for that for as long as possible. So that is definitely still important to me. The next is improve my relationships. I I mean, I'm not gonna like, these are all pretty general. I don't think any of these are gonna majorly change. However, I do feel like when it comes to improving my relationships, there is more that I could be doing still. And that you may always feel like that a little bit, obviously. But I don't think I have been prioritizing some of the things I said I would do. For example, I said I'd write a letter to somebody every month. I've only done it for February. I, and now that I'm being reminded of it, I will probably do it for March. For some reason there's some blocker in my brain about this. I don't know what it is. Something I haven't done for a long time and it's hard to like get back into it. I also think that I just need to reach out to my friends more. Like there are people who are I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't talked to her in forever. And I'm like, and then I don't do anything about it, you know? Next is growing my financial decisions and understanding. I do feel like I've really been on track with this, especially with getting that new credit card and looking into um, like a Roth IRA and all that kind of stuff. Next is be a continuous learner. My reading goal kind of falls under this and I feel like I haven't been very on top of that. So that is definitely somewhere that I can improve, but I have been really good about learning Spanish. I've just been using Duolingo and I'd really like to step it up a little bit more and investigate other ways I can learn Spanish, um, especially speaking it. Lastly is grow my content creation, which I, I love. And like I said, I've already kind of touched on that a lot. It's got ups and downs with that one. Once you have checked in on all of your key areas that you are focusing on, reminded yourself of all of these, after I've looked at that, I'm like, okay, I remember why I chose these particular things to be my highlights for the year. Next, I want to create plans for going forward. So what I'm doing right now is I am just taking those five big priorities of mine and I'm just writing them down and I'm kind of doing a little brain dump, um, kind of the way I just talked to you guys about thoughts that I have on each one of those and creating a plan going forward for goals that I wanna have. Some of these may match the goals I'd already set for myself at the beginning of the new year. Some of these might be a little bit different and new. The important thing is your goals can always change and realigning them and refocusing them and getting more a little bit more excited about them again is really important. Obviously your girls aren't always gonna be the most exciting things. You might after a while get bored of them, but this is a way that I find that I can kind of re-energize myself. So for keeping health a priority, a couple new things I would like to implement are wearing point shoes for at least one class a week, and also adding calf strengthening exercises in, especially on the days that I'm not doing cardio. For improve my relationships, I still wanna write those letters. I have several close friends who I don't live nearby and I really want to make a better effort about calling them. So I'm gonna write that and I'm gonna say I want to call these people at least once a month. In terms of growing financially, I think I would really like to open a Roth IRA. For be a continuous learner, I'm gonna say for this one that I want to 
start winding down and getting ready for bed earlier so that I have more time to read before I go to bed. Lastly is grow my content creation. I think a couple of ways I could do that is more batch content. I have tried this a couple of times and I haven't quite worked it out with my schedule yet, but I really do think that doing this helps me a lot. The times I've tried it, like I have been so on top of it for a week and then I fall off of it like the next week if I don't have time. And then I'm also gonna say, I'm gonna designate Tuesday and Wednesday nights as the day that I edit my videos. With that being said, I'm now going to move on to actually looking at April and setting it up in Notion. So I've already kind of put the page together. I just have it all pretty and pink for spring. The quote that I picked this month is, let all that you do be done in love, which is from 1 Corinthians. Then based on the reflection that I just did, I set my top three priorities for the month. So those are that I want to call my friends, I want to do the 9.30 wind down for bed, and also batch create content. So on my to do this month, I also adjusted this a little bit. So I have write a letter to someone, finish two books, call my friends, four classes on point, and then I have my business items separate. So those are gonna be batch create short form content three times. And I've decided to say this instead of upload 10 TikToks a month, just because I feel like this is easier. Like if I dedicate a few hours, three times, that feels like less work than creating 10 TikToks, even though it's the same thing. Anyway, and then I wanna do one Etsy update for a template. So that is my setup. You guys know that when I sit here, I'm going to be reviewing my finances with you. One little caveat, I am filming this on the 24th of March. I'm filming this pretty early. However, I'm not really planning on making many more purchases. I will talk a little bit about the extra couple that I will probably make that will change this. So let's just have a look. Let's start with groceries. I budgeted $250, I spent $321. I just think I, I need to budget more for my groceries. I'm averaging around probably 350 a month. I have noticed I've been spending a lot less in my restaurants and like fast food categories. So it usually balances out. Then I budgeted $20 for alcohol and bars. I actually gave up alcohol. I don't really know why I budgeted anything. It was kind of just in case I gave up, but I didn't. And I haven't actually had any alcohol for the past month and a half. And I am very excited for it to be April so I can um, have some wine. <laughs> then for coffee shops and dessert, I budgeted $50. I only spent $6. I got like one cookie in the city. Then for fast food, I budgeted 50 and I spent 35. There is a high likelihood that I might spend a little bit more on this, but we'll see what happens. For restaurants, I budgeted $100 and I wound up only spending 33. There were a couple times when I was supposed to go out and then I just decided like I didn't really want to or like the plans got moved around and rearranged and stuff so I just didn't wind up spending as much there as I had expected. However, I did spend a lot more in the next category. I spent $173 for gas where I budgeted $150. I was just doing a lot more driving back and forth um, to visit my boyfriend over in Philly. For dance, I budgeted $200. I spent $195. Um, for home improvement, I budgeted $100 and spent $106, so that's pretty much on par. For clothing, I budgeted $100 and I spent $28. I got a new pair of pajamas. For additional shopping, I said $150. I spent $177.73, but that is actually with a buffer. I don't actually think I spent that much. I spent... I only spent $77. I wanted that extra $100 just in case anything came up this week, but... I don't actually think it's going to, I just kind of wanted it there so I could move my money around as I needed to at the end of the month and know that I was still good on all of my budgeting. Most of that additional shopping, by the way, is like cleaning supplies or like if I go to Target and I buy some like things that I don't necessarily need but kind of need things like that just like are miscellaneous and don't really fit into any other category. Um, then for public transport, I budgeted 75, I spent 50. It's crazy to me how expensive the trains are to get into New York City. Then for rideshare and parking, I budgeted $100. This again is another placeholder. I put 70 because I know I'm gonna need to get some kind of Lyft, Uber or something to get 
to the airport and so I wanted to include that. For tolls, I budgeted 70 and I only spent 45. That just renews automatically. Sometimes it charges me 70, sometimes it charges me 45. Just depends on what I'm doing, I think. For fun, I put 200 and I only spent 40. Also having to do with the way that plans and things got rearranged. For charity, I said 25. Oh, I do need to put that in. I have actually spent 25 there. So oh, in total, I spent about $1,300 which I think is what I'm gonna to try to budget for from here on out. I've been budgeting quite a lot and I have consistently been spending a lot less than that. And some months it's like I force myself to spend more money, which is the most ridiculous thing in the world. Like I should not be doing that. So I really think I wanna to try to start budgeting around like the $1,200 mark. And if I go a little bit over, I go a little bit over, like it's no big deal. I know I have a little bit of buffer in terms of what I'd really like to be saving and what I like, am currently spending. Also, one other thing I did buy that I don't have here, I did spend about a thousand dollars on a flight for the summer. So that's also a thing, but I took that out of my flight fund, which I've been saving for for a while. So it brings my flight fund down quite a lot, but I did have quite a lot of money saved in there anyway. Additionally, I had a lot of money from my bonus this month which was really nice and my paycheck actually went up a little bit so my sinking funds I am contributing nearly four thousand dollars to those savings and I also put a decent amount into my 401k and HSA as well so feeling good when it comes to savings I don't usually take you guys through this but I usually just start by copying over like my bills that I spent I copy over the income that I am expected to get and then I usually copy over like my budget for the expenses and then I go through and adjust that so I'm gonna do that now also you guys if you are interested in getting this template that I'm using it is available on my Etsy store which is always linked below because we are three months into the year, I am going to look at my yearly summary and I just want to see on average how much I am spending a month. So for groceries, like I said, it looks like I'm around $340 a month. So I think for next month, I will go ahead and budget $350. For alcohol and bars, <laughs> because my little alcohol ban is ending, I do suspect this will go up. So I'm going to put... I'm actually gonna put $100, which makes me sound like I'm gonna go crazy, but I do have a friend coming and I know that we're gonna wanna go out. I have a couple other things. I'm just gonna go on the safe side and say 100. Then for coffee shops and dessert, fast food, restaurants, I think I'm gonna bring down to 50 as well, which is like only going out like once, but I can always move that around if I change my mind. Gas, I'm gonna keep at 150. Dance, I'm gonna keep at 200. That's pretty regular. Home improvement, I'm gonna put 50 for that. I'm also gonna put 50 for clothing. Um, and additional shopping, I will keep at 150. Public transport, I'll keep at 75. Okay, so I'm, I'm at quite a lot. <laughs> uh, we're gonna bring down coffee shops and dessert to 25. Bring down additional shopping to 100. Bring down the fun to 100 as well. I know I said that I wanted to be bringing this down more, but this is bringing it down. So last month I budgeted $1,600 in spending. Well, more like $1,700 actually. I did like $1,640. And this is $1,470. If I could bring this down just a tiny bit more. Yeah, you know what? This is just where it's going to stay. Um, ideally I will be under budget again, but this is already me lowering a lot of these quite a lot and I just want to see how it goes, you know? I'm also going to put in how much I want for my sinking fund contributions and the way that I determine this is on my overview I basically have a recommended monthly contribution in order to achieve like the goal that I set and to figure that out I put in like the goal and when I want to achieve that goal and then it calculates out how much I need to be putting in every month. So $400 for my emergency fund, 250 for vacation, put in 300 for flights, put in 75 for my car and 50 for gifts. And then for life events, 
I'm putting 300 there as well. Basically, you see how much is left. Okay, well, I don't quite have enough to put in 300 there. So, we're gonna have to do a little bit of adjustments. Um, I feel like my vacation fund is doing very well at the minute. So I'm gonna put in just 200 there. I'm putting 200 in life events. Okay, that actually seems like a pretty good budget to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and already pull out as if I spent about half of what I would be putting into those savings. So that gives me a little bit of wiggle room, but also ensures that I am definitely putting in money. So I'm gonna, right now, put $200 into my emergency fund, $100 into my vacation fund, $100 into my flights, and then 25 for cars and gifts, and then 100 for life events. So like I said, that means that that money is already gone in terms of what I, in my head, think about what I've spent, but it also gives me room to make sure that I am putting everything in correctly. And that is my budget for the month. Okay, it's time for my favorite part of my reset every month, and that is setting up my bullet journal. I find this process to be so relaxing to just sit here and reset for the month and just like have a completely blank page that I can set up on. However, I do apologize a little bit for this weird view. Normally, I do film this upside down and then I like flip it over and it looks normal and you guys can see it like as if they get the same angle that you would normally see something, i.e. not upside down. Um, but I must have like filmed this at a weird angle this time. And when I tried to flip it, it looked really weird. So I'm saving you guys from that. And you guys can get the picture from being upside down as well. I went with a very pretty purple and pink theme. And then I decorated everywhere with butterflies and i'm really happy with the way that this turned out it's so springtime and i am so ready for spring you guys like the weather is finally starting to warm up and i cannot wait for it to just be warm all the time oh it's gonna be amazing I obviously also included my casual magic, which I include every single month. This is just a place for me to write down one piece of casual magic from the day. I got this idea years and years ago from Unjaded Jade here on YouTube. Um, she puts forth this idea of just letting casual little things be romanticized and come to you throughout the day. And I've really taken that to heart and I've included this for a very long time. And it's also so nice to look back on and just see the little things that would make me happy every day. I always do struggle a little bit with coming up for a theme every single month so if you guys have any ideas of what you think I should do for May let me know and maybe I will do those I need some inspiration this is the finished spread I'm really happy with the way that it turned out I think it looks so cute Last segment of the video, I'm just going to be doing a book review and then telling you guys some of my favorite things from this past month. So this month, I finally finished reading Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is such a popular book. I'm sure if you're anywhere on the productivity side of the internet that you have heard of this book. And I really did find it quite interesting. To be completely honest, I didn't feel like there was anything super groundbreaking in this book. But I really like the anecdotes in the story. I like the way that they talk about the way that different people have implemented small things in their life to achieve bigger habits. Um, like I said, nothing super groundbreaking, but I did still find it very interesting and enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. And I would recommend if you are in the need of a little bit of motivation. If you watched last month's monthly reset, then you will know that I did a little bit of shopping at the end of last month. And I went to Sephora and bought a whole bunch of products and I wanted to talk about a couple of them that I've really been loving this month. First of all is the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm. I really like the way it feels, I like the way it smells and I like the way it looks, and I feel like that's the perfect mix, right? I also last month got this Rare Beauty Liquid Blush. This is in the color Hope, and I have it on 
right now I am loving this. I didn't know what I would think about it. I was worried it would be too pigmented, but I really like the way it sits on my skin and I like the color of it. And I've been wearing it on a regular basis. The final thing that I've really been loving this month is Formula One. Formula One started back up at the beginning of this month. I actually just watched the Australian Grand Prix today. It was very good. I really enjoyed the race. The first couple of races were like subpar. This was a good race. And yeah, I love Formula One. I've grown up loving Formula One and I'm so excited that it's back. I am gonna go see one Grand Prix this year, which is so fun. And I will definitely take you guys along with me for that when that comes. It's not for another few months, but I'm very excited about it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then make sure to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments how you like to reset for a new month, if you're doing anything big because it's you know, the end of the quarter. I really appreciate you guys coming on this journey with me and I'm excited to see where the rest of the year takes us. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.